Hi, I'm Kirby with Augustine E-Bikes. And for the last several months, I've been traveling around the country visiting family and friends. So I haven't published any new videos on our channel in several months. I'm now back and excited to share a whole new series of videos with our YouTube audience. In this video, I'm going to show you how to program the LCD S830 and the SW900 LCD controllers. And the reason I'm doing this is that I just installed my brand new 2000 watt kit that comes with the S830. And just prior to that, I was running a 1500 watt kit with the SW900, which broke and I had to replace it. So I thought I would show you both. And it makes sense because they both come from the same large family of LCDs, which vary greatly from the functions that they control to the level of power that they can handle which is anywhere from 24 volts to 72 volts and beyond. One thing these LCDs share in common is that programming these LCDs can make a huge difference in how much performance you get from your e-bike. Now this family of LCDs are controlling between about 65 and 70 percent of the e-bike kits around the world. Now before I show you how to program these LCDs, one tip is that before you start your ride, to get the maximum amount of power out of your kit, Set your pedal assist setting on the front panel to its highest setting, whether it's 3, 5, or 9, depending on your setup. Now let's take a look at these two LCD controllers. On this particular LCD, you can have a speed display on the display itself, motor power ratio display, battery level, error indicator, total mileage, single mileage, single running time, light signal, and more. It's really important when you're working with kits and I'm a big fan of kits because it gives you a lot of control where some of the built-in um, uh, e-bikes that you can buy out there which are great uh, but a lot of those components are built into the frame very hard to access so if something goes wrong you oftentimes have to bring it back to the manufacturer a lot and troubleshoot a lot of problems that you may have on the road so in order to get started you want to turn on your battery and then what you're going to do to the um, a control on the left hand side that has two arrows, one up and down and a middle or M button. Hold down the M button for about five seconds and that'll power on the LCD. To access the actual settings, you want to hold down the up and arrow key at the same time. And that'll bring you into the menu for all the P settings. In order to scroll through your settings, you want to press the M or middle button and it'll move you through your settings. So P1 is your backlight brightness. Uh, you can set from one being the darkest to three being the brightest. I always keep it at three because particularly out in the sunshine, I really want to be able to see that uh, all the information that's available on my LCD. P2 is uh, the difference between kilometers and mileage. I live here in the U.S., so I pick number one, which is for miles, or you could pick zero for kilometers. P3 P3 is voltage class. It's between 24 volt, 36 volt, and 48 volt. I happen to have a 48 volt kit, so I pick 48 volts. P4 is hibernation time. I always pick zero for never because I, I want to keep it on. But that's up completely up to you. Then P5. This is uh, your PAS uh, settings. And you can set whether you have five variables or three. I set five. So I picked the 1-5 gear mode ratio. Wheel diameter. This is super important. I, have a I ride only 29ers. Uh, a lot of people have 26 inch. But whatever your wheel size, you definitely want to put that on there. Because otherwise you're never going to get an accurate readout of your speed or your mileage. Now, P7 is really important. Uh, the magnet steel number for speed test range. And it's set, I believe, uh, by default to 100. But for this particular kit, you want to set it to 47. It's really important. Otherwise, your kit won't run correctly. So P8 is speed limit. And this is really important. Uh, you, can, you can control the speed. So in other words, if you have a situation where you, you don't want to go over 25 miles an hour, just set it to 25. But if you want to get the maximum speed out of it, there's two settings. It's either going to be set to 50 or 100. And it does vary from bike to bike. So try both and see if you're getting maximum power out of it. Otherwise, feel free to set the power limit to whatever you'd like. P9 is really important. Zero is for zero start. And one is for non-zero start. And zero start is simply that if you throttle, you'll get power right away. Non-zero start relies on the pedal assist. 
And so you have to start pedaling before the, pa the power will actually activate from the motor. Then P10 is the drive mode. And um, zero is just power drive alone. One is electric drive. So you're driving the bike by the handlebars. And then two is the combination of the two. Now, because two will, the, the two setting, the power drive and the electric drive, will not work under zero start mode. It's only for pedal assist. So make sure you pick the right, the right combination there. So here on P12 is where you can set your range for power assist. You can either set it to three, three or five, which gives you a little bit more sensitivity between the settings. P13 is the power magnet steel number. This refers to the number of magnets on your pedal assist magnet, and it's usually eight or 12, but it should be visible to you so you can count them. Now, depending on your manufacturer, what version of this particular LCD you have, there can be more than 13, 14, 15 settings. Uh, that all really varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. But basically, I've gone through the, the, the principal list, and um, if you have those additional settings, you can find manuals online pretty easily. Now, one function that I do have to mention, because I learned this the hard way, uh, but it is on your uh, LCD, is if you hold down the uh, bottom arrow key for five seconds, it'll go into cruise control which automatically puts your bike moving at about six kilometers an hour. So I was off my bike last week and standing there and I inadvertently hit the button and my bike started to take off. So I had to wrestle it to the ground. I didn't realize right away that I had done that, uh, but I was able to turn off the battery and get the bike back. So over time, the uh, cables on my LCD got crimped. I think I crimped enough that eventually it stopped working. Actually, it only worked partially. So what I did is I replaced the SW900 with a new one. And this time I'm actually getting a 52 volt uh, LCD. The last one was limited to 48, so I upgraded to the 52. And I don't like the bracket that they use to uh, mount this out on the handlebar, so I'm gonna take it off and just mount it on my own mount, which I bought for the bike. Yeah, it's flat here. Then I can use my own mount and then eventually connect it to the uh, quick connect down here by the controller and swap these out. So now I'm going to attach the control button panel, make sure it's in the appropriate place. Once done, battery is already hooked up. I'm going to turn it on, make sure that this powers up before I actually program it. So in order to get into the bike's parameters, just like with the S830, what you want to do is press the up and down arrow key at the same time for about three seconds, and that will get you in. And then you can navigate the parameters using the M key or the middle key. Now P1 is your display luminance. So one is the darkest and three is the brightest. P2 is your kilometers versus mileage. So zero is for kilometers, one is for miles. P3 is your voltage. Now this particular kit, is 24, 36, and 48 volt. So you pick the voltage which is correct for your bike. P4 is sleep time. I always hit zero because I don't want it, I want it to be on all the time. Now P5 is your PAS grades. What this is, you have a choice of three different grades or five. I always opt for five. It gives me a little bit more sensitivity with pedal assist if you use it. P6, very important, it's your wheel size. I have a 29er, so I press 29. You pick your wheel size, and if you don't know your wheel size, you can see it on the side of the rim. Now, P7 says speed measuring magnet. This is very, very important. Your range is from one to 100, but for this kit, you wanna pick 47. It won't work correctly unless you pick the correct number. So 47 is the number you want. Then P8 is your speed limit, and sometimes it's either set, if you want unlimited speed limit, it's either 50 or 100. You're just going to have to try both and see which one works, but it's one of those two. Otherwise, if you want to really limit your speed, let's say you don't want to go past 29 miles per hour, just set it to 29, and it'll stop at 29 miles per hour, so you can't go any faster. 
P9 is zero start and non-zero start. Zero start means that the minute you put your throttle on, it'll go. If it's a non-zero start, you have to use pedal assist to kick in the throttle. So that's your choice. So P10 is driving mode. Zero is driven by the PAS purely and so the throttle won't do you any good. One is driven by the throttle, and two is driven by both. That's what I always opt for. P11 is PAS sensitivity. It ranges from one to 24. That's completely up to you how sensitive you want it to be. P12 is your start strength for PAS, and that ranges from zero to five. Uh, and again, it's completely up to you how much sensitivity you want. Now, if you're using the PAS magnets, P13 is for the type of magnet. Most common are 8 or 12 magnets. P14 is for your current, so it ranges from 12 amp to 20, so it's good for you to know what your controller's amp is. Now, some SW900 LCDs come with settings above 14, so you're just going to have to look in your manual. But for the purposes of this particular kit, it stops at 14.